In theory, in oh, theory, we are now started. started. So hi, <laughs> <laughs> we actually all got online more or less at the same time today. So that was an act of God, I think, Erica. <laughs> thank you for your prayers because something worked. Thank you. Something. <laughs> well, and last last week you weren't able to to talk at all, but okay, we found this we found a work. work. And that was good. So, Looks like uh, it is. yeah, yeah, I can hear, I can hear you, Don. Can you hear Erica? Yep. And okay, I okay. There we go. Better. Yeah. I I have changed my configuration, Don, so my volume shouldn't be doing the weird spiky thing, the weird hand dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. I've been practicing it with the cast of Hamilton all week. <laughs> We've all been walking around the house going. <laughs> it's it's a little embarrassing to be a forty eight year old woman who's walking around the house beatboxing with her children, but <laughs> sounds pretty normal to me. I know. This is what happens. The oldest one hits fifteen and you go, Oh okay then. We have to <laughs> just wait. I don't know. We've been beatboxing for a long time. We have an a cappella group here in Minnesota called Home Free, and their beatboxer is amazing. And my really? kids have been huge fans for a long time. You should go go check out their YouTube channel at Home Free. Oh, I'm writing this down. Yeah, they are. Their beatboxer can do things with his voice. You would swear they have a backup band. And they there, don't. It's all him. All of know, it. There is, a, there is a video online from, I think it's USC Medical Center, of, uh, it's not an ENT otolaryngologic, laryngological study. It's a people who invented an MRI that could take video instead of static images. Uh -huh. And so they got mm -hmm. uh, an opera singer and they filmed her from the side so that you could see how her throat and larynx and everything were working. And then they brought in a beatboxer. And it's oh, wow. like you said, you can't, you can't match up what he is physiologically doing with the sound that's coming out because so much of it is breath control. Right, and, and muscle control in the mouth. How, they, yeah. how we, they change the structure of their... yeah. Unbelievable! I'll see if I can find that video. In fact, I need you should. That down. They actually have they have a second wonder of music dumb because they're they also have a guy who can sing the full spectrum. He can go from high soprano all the way to low, low, low. It's oh, wow. crazy, and it's because he has abnormally long vocal cords. Oh, so he I. It's bizarre. Interesting. I've been learning so much about the voice and how the voice does what the voice does, and I'm fascinated. I have to go find that. Yeah, well, you should check them out because they're it's pretty. They're pretty good. And if your if your kids like the beatboxy thing, and Erica, you should let your girls know. Um, uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda, who did Hamilton, which Don, I was bopping to. Um, where before you you got here, I was. Yeah. Oh, it's such a good soundtrack. Um, Lin Manuel Miranda went on Jimmy Fallon, and they did the Wheel of Freestyle, where it was like no whammies, uh. and so they it went like a, a slot machine, and he got three random words, and he had to freestyle those three words <laughs> nice. to his voice, and then he went up with one of the guys from the Roots who also freestyled, and both of them were just stupendous. The The guy from The Roots had to put, um, oh, he had to put, like, pumpkin pie into a freestyle, and I think <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda had to end with Darth Vader, which <laughs> I, I don't even know what you can come up with except for what he did, but it's, it's, a, it's not a very long video, and it is, it's one of those things where you go, okay, there's, there's a special kind of genius that covers that kind of poetic ear to hear the rhyme before you get there. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> my brain does not work like that. No, 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 it doesn't. And I remember watching kids when I was teaching who could freestyle, and I kept thinking, God, what is it about 
what is it that you're hearing in childhood? You know, do you have a family that plays with language and kind of Bob Dylan stuff or what? I have no idea. But it was cool. All right, I'm I am going to find that video and link to it. Uh, so Don, you said you were going to bring the crochet. There's a lot of it. Woo! <laughs> Good, you can make up for me. <laughs> There's a lot of it. All right. Um, do you just want me to go? Because we were talking about last week how to manage fabric. Yes. Um, and, you know, my perspective with people is always like crochet is not what you think crochet is. Right. Necessarily. Um, it's because you're seeing crochet that is worked really densely. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not necessarily what it has to be. So, here's my crochet. <laughs> I started out crocheting. Uh, with my grandma, when I have absolutely no idea when, like forever. But blankets were my first thing. Ooh. Um, and my favorite thing to make crochet blankets with is kitchen cotton, because you can buy it in the huge cones, and they're really mm -hmm. cheap, and they work up really fast, and they make a nice heavy yeah. blanket. And that cream, I looked, I was looking at it, going, that is not yeah. wool. There's something about no. that. <laughs> It's, it's cream kitchen cotton, <laughs> and awesome. it's superiorly washable. Um, and then this is a, uh, it's a ripple afghan, and it just has some bits of other um, colors, washable stuff thrown in. That's um, so cool. How old were you when you made that? Were you a kid? Like super dense. No, I made this, um, I don't know, I made this probably 10 years ago now. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is kind of an old worn one. But, I mean, it's super... For Look at it's super drapey. It doesn't stand up. It doesn't stand up on its own. <laughs> for for oh. those playing at home, listening along at home, hold it up again, Dawn, so I can see the colors. It is crochet mm -hmm. ripple with white and gray and it's got turquoise blue and, blue. and yeah, there's uh, some maroon in there. And is the like a, yeah, like an eggplant. Was there a boucle? In there yep. as well? There is. That's There's a um, like that. that one is an Aracania kind of a boucle cotton. Oh. In turquoises and like chocolatey browns. It looks very um, Navajo nation. <laughs> I love those. How, it's, it's a very how, open ripple. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um that that um boucle cotton is actually why I started this blanket because I saw it at the store and it was on clearance and I got like six skeins of it, and I was like, what am I going to do with it? I loved it. I loved the colors, but I didn't, I was like, okay, blanket it is. How, how long did it take you to make something? I mean, how, well, first off, how big is it? Is it like twin bed, or is it? Uh, um, it's about twin bed width, um, wow. and it is probably about seven feet long. Cool. How long um, did it take you, do you think? This one? Um... I worked on it on and off, so I don't know, start to finish, how long it took me. Um, I worked on it, you can go on my Ravelry project page, <laughs> and I'm sure there's a depressing start and end date on there <laughs> for how long it took me, because it's, you know, I very rarely work a project from start to finish. I, it usually gets put down um, and picked up again, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yes, I feel your pain. Yeah, you're going to hear snorting because one of the dogs is like, oh, look, she has a blanket. Let's go visit it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so. Very confusing. Yeah, he's here. It is, actually. And I have a hard time sleeping when he's not in the room with me because he snores at night. And yeah. it's like ocean waves for me to bulldog snoring. Um, okay, so in terms of regular crochet, um... I found some of the projects I did for the first Madame Defarge book, actually. <gasps> oh, awesome! Because ah. those are beautiful. Uh, oh, good, you found the color. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Yay. the three. <laughs> the, well, they're all th all three of them were Noro. The samples I worked up from the um, the triangle one. Um, uh, flatland. flatland. Yeah, Flatland. Um, so for Flatland, I worked up um, a tutorial on how to construct different kinds of triangles in crochet was my deal. Um, and all three of them I did in Noro, so you could really see the structure. Um, yeah. But again, um, you know, look. Okay, so the light is shining through it. Yeah. So the structure of crochet just makes a nice, 
it really makes a nice lace fabric if you work the right yarn with the right hook. The thing that I remember really liking about that particular pattern, aside from the fact that it's those colors of Noro, which, um, Erica, I think those are the same colors that you were using. That's what I was just thinking. So we've yeah. got the, the mm-hmm. gray the and, and the gray and the blue and the, the yeah. purpley the color and the green. Yeah. And then structurally, one of the things that it looks like, and I can't tell for real, but it looks like there are double crochets that are creating triangles. So yeah, triangle that's triangle. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. It's, a v, it's a V-stitch for the yeah. pattern, um, but then, you know, the structure of the triangle itself was, yeah. bottom, you know, bottom so up. So it's a big triangle made up of a whole bunch of little triangles. It basically. is. Yeah, it is. Yep. But again... For, for those of us who, you know... know are, Master crochet people. This is a super, super simple stitch. It's just double crochets and chain stitches. That's my kind that's of it. project. Yeah, that's it. I could that's, do that. But that's also, mm-hmm. yeah, you could. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of crochet is you either really, I, at least I think you get I can a crochet, complicated. I just make crochet for more than 10 minutes. Yeah, you get a complicated looking result mm-hmm. with simple stitches. And it's just because of how the stitches are structured. Right. So once you black it, if you're working in the right gauge, you get a really beautiful fabric, I think. Um, Do you block it the same way that you would block um, knitting in as much mm-hmm. as you stretch the bejujus out of it as much as possible? Yep. I would stre- I actually stretch crochet a lot more aggressively than I stretch knitting. And that's a technical term, right? Stretch the bejujus? Stretch. <laughs> absolutely. Stretch the out of it. Yes. That is absolutely <laughs> firmly a technical description yeah. of the the feature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is, here's another. Ah, now we have the bright, bright colors. <laughs> yep, and this one's just like granny, just lines of like granny stitch. So it's so just, that's the three crochets into, yep, three double it, crochets into one space. Yep, so it's just three double crochets into the same space and a chain. Um, this one's really, really bright Noro. Um, and it's just rows. So you just increase on each side. So it go goes up. from Little baby oh, blues to the to the to darker baby yep. blue to yellow. It's like rainbow colored to bright pinks into it. Yep. Almost a russet. Very very bright. Yep. Now but when again, you, you get it's super again simple stitches, complicated looking fabric. When you start that one, the other one started at the neck, so yep. it worked on, on the flat part. This one starts at the tip. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep. That is so cool. Yeah. And all of these in the first Defarge book. They are. <laughs> Which I felt bad. These have been in the basement for a while. I didn't even take them out this year. This made me like all of the knits that didn't make it out this year. That's good. You <laughs> can rip the light of day. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Okay, so here's the last one. <clears throat> yeah, this was amazing. And this one is worked like a back to scarf. This one really is the rainbowy Noro. Um, it just works. Right, but that's like yeah. dark rainbow. Yep, it's not a. It's they're not neons. You know, it's still uh, that dusty, that awesome yeah, dusty mm-hmm. antique color. Yeah, this one's really rainbow. So you start at one, it's like a back to scarf. It starts at one tip. Um, and you work into the middle. Oh, thank you for working at the mailman, guys. <laughs> Important. I know, yeah. Protective. We're under attack, you know. <laughs> so you just work into the wide part of the triangle, and then you taper off again. And what kind of scarf were you saying that's like? A ba- back to? Yes, a back to scarf. Yep, B A K T U S. I want to make sure I spell it right. It's a that's a fairly well known knitting pattern. I think it's a free one, actually. Ooh, even better. And there's a lot of um, that was huge on Ravelry a couple of years ago. Yeah, there's a lot of riffs off of it um, in terms of you know, different stitch patterns and corrugated and things like that. You can find lots of options, but it's basically just a long narrow triangle kind of thing. It's so pretty. So, and again, you know, this one's, a, again, it's a combination of double crochets and chain stitches, but then you alternate, see the rows of single crochet in there? Yep. Yep. So that's how you get um, kind of the line that makes like in the fabric. Netted, netted look. Right, exactly. And again, dead, dead simple stitches, <laughs> but you get a pretty, a pretty um, complex looking fabric. I remember realizing that about what what you were just saying that the with with knitting to get really complex looking knitting you really do have to know something about lace or something about which direction your decreases or increases are going to go 
Right. And that, that, that really isn't true with crochet because you're almost always trying to fit multiples into one space so you automatically get shape. Mm -hmm. Right. Where you have to falsely construct that shape. Right. Yet. Right. Crochet is much more um, building block, unit block mm. kind of of a construction than knitting is, I think. Right. Um, kind of like Legos, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I go with it. Yeah, yeah kind of. The more so stuff one, we can compare to Legos is a good thing because <laughs> everybody yeah, gets go. Lego. This one you've seen before. So this is obviously a bulkier. This is that cowl I was wearing a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, ooh, it's upside down. Um, you How know, you? A, oh, a bulkier yarn but still worked with a big enough hook that the fabric has a lot of give and a lot of drape. Yep. Um, you know, but it's a much more solid piece just because the yarn is bulkier. The other nice thing about crochet when you live in Minnesota is that because it uses more yarn and it um, it combines it, it's almost like a multiple thickness piece. Um, so it, it holds a crochet holds a lot of air in it. So a relatively light and airy piece um, is really really warm. Right. That's really cool. Now I had a question. Remember how a couple weeks ago? Oh wait, we have another question. Erica? Well, no, that's the comment. That's the exclamation oh. point. No, we have uh, chat, chatter in the uh, the chat here. We have Henriette and, um, okay, I'm probably going to mangle this, Yazipengu, um, Y-A-Z-I-P-E-N-G-Y-O-U, Yazipengu, um, uh, discussing the same thing, that same point that you made a couple weeks ago, Don, about uh, depending on the hook you use. You can get either the really mm -hmm. dense, tight fabric that could stop the bullet, or right. the lacy. Um, right, and stuff. I'll show you. I'll show you when you want that. Hang on. How most uh, <laughs> most yarn yarn uh, labels recommend the wrong hook. They recommend they one that will give you a really tight fabric, so people yeah, right. instinctively stick with that. Right. And then they get disappointed because yeah. they're using the wrong. Hook. But when you want that is. With something right. Like There's times when you want that. You oh. want the uh, right. Kevlar. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. So this um, is again Noro, um, and it's Noro sock actually worked with a relatively small hook, um, and you see how you get kind of the lines in the fabric. Um, yeah. Because and it's much you're denser, working. Remember tighter. how we? It's a much denser, tighter because I worked with a really small hook to get a denser fabric. Right. Um, but the this is the fabric you get when we were talking last week about working through one loop only. Ah. This is the fabric you get working through one loop only, and that structurally gives you a more flexible fabric. As what well. size hook do you think that was? This was probably probably like an F maybe or smaller. Okay. Um, um, with sock yarn. So yeah. for for visual for people, see this is an F. And this is a well, it says a three. I don't know what a, a three is. My bad. So Okay, wait, hold them up again because now I have the stupid Thing. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so this one is the F, which is basically the equivalent of like a six, I think, if I got it right. Um, a six size six knitting needle, um, is that four, four millimeter. Four millimeter. Yeah, it says four millimeter, and then this it says three, so I don't. Uh, I could actually check. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, I have. It's it's small. So prepared. It's like about a two and a half millimeter, maybe. Yeah. This one. That makes so, sense. So, um, I ha these are my keep them in my tool bag for picking up. Just yeah. Uh, so um, mitts are when you want to do something mitts. a little denser, and then also hats. Right. Or when you want. So this one is a headband. I think I've seen you in that. Yeah, probably. This is more uh, Briar Rose, and it's in an eggplant kind of variegated, <coughs> excuse me, colorway. Um, and this one works post stitches. So what a post stitch is, 
um, is like a double crochet, so you have that, that longer stitch. Right. But instead of working through that little V at the top, working under those V loops at the top, you work around, physically work around the body of the stitch. Ooh. Yeah, so you insert your needle from the front of the fabric to the back of the fabric, around the back of the stitch or the front of the stitch, whichever way you're going. If you want to pull the stitch forward or you want to push it backward. Um, and that creates almost like a cabled look. Yeah. A cabled stitch look in your fabric. That is so cool. But again, and then is it, it makes chain much... stitches in between to get the, um, the expandy parts? Yes, I believe so. Because you get kind of a triangular thing going in between every third. Yep. So, so it's uh, actually, did I work this one sideways? Was this an ear band? No. Nope. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a. Uh, so it is smaller on the top and yep, wider on the bottom. It's smaller on the top and wider on the bottom. Um, and those three dimensional stitches make it really, really cushy and dense and warm. But again, the fabric itself isn't stiff. Right. Um, because you're working at the gauge you're choosing to work at. Right. Erica has a question. <gasps> Yay! Okay, so <laughs> from, from the peanut gallery here, um, people are, are saying on Danish yarn they only include the needle size, not the hook size. What would you suggest for people who are, say they're looking at a yarn and it only says use X size needle, how would you translate that for crochet, for knowing what size yeah. hook to use? Well, um, one, I never use the size hook that they list on even if it lists a hook size, right. do you always go up? I, I always go up. <laughs> I have very, very rarely used the, you know, because a typical convention for a worsted weight, weight yarn would be to use a G hook, um, mm -hmm. and that's what gets you. That's what gets you crochet like iron. <laughs> At least I think, in my experience, it does. Right. Um, for me, with how I crochet, um, you know, so worsted weight yarn, I almost always will work with. Probably a J hook. <laughs> Can you ask back in the chat so room? So that's Eric, like three higher. Yeah. Well, yeah. And some of it depends on the structure of the yarn. Like this one was a single. Um. You know, so denser yarn, you may want to even work bigger. Um. It just depends. You know, an an airier yarn, you can maybe work tighter. Um. So for crochet, you would look at say. Um, the millimeter size that it's saying That's for what the I was just typing for the I'm needle find it. version chart. It's usually a translate that to go right, up. right. It's usually usually they're using about the same millimeter size for a knitting needle and a crochet hook. And the problem is, what you're physically doing with the yarn is really different when you're knitting and what you're crocheting. Right. When you're knitting, you're just pulling one loop through one loop through one loop through one loop. And in crochet, you're actually twisting strands around each other. And through each other, um, it, so it just it creates a denser fabric to start with. So you, I think you need to right. work bigger to get a fabric you're going to be happier with. Um, you know, one of the best things to do is if you're not used to it and you're used to getting results that you don't like with crochet, mm -hmm. get, some, get a couple different weights of yarn, pull out a different couple weights of yarn, and use use a bunch of different hook sizes and see what you get to figure out what you right. like. Are there yeah, patterns that, like? Yazi Ping, you said she teaches uh, crochet with worsted weight yarn and an H hook because it's tight enough to see defined stitches but not bulletproof. Right. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Yazi Ping, you. I'm assuming you're a she. If you're not, please correct me. And and give us a phonetic uh, sure. phonetic pronunciation because that's an awesome name. And that's the um with the uh going back to when you were talking about the post stitches and before that. Mm -hmm. I I am experiencing, uh, even though I'm not a new crocheter, I am working without a pattern on this one, and I know what I did wrong, but I don't know how I could have corrected it, and anyway, I like the way it's looking. But when I did my, my 66 stitches, my chain, uh -huh. and I started doing the uh, single crochet chain, single crochet chain, I realized a few rows later, that or a few rounds later, that probably what I did was I doubled everything. So Go, I moving from the moving from the chain to the first round. So yes. you single crocheted in every chain and put 
and put chains in between them. Right. Yep. So yep. now what we're getting is an Egyptian yep. collar. <laughs> Which is fine. Which is great. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if you I make it, it this way, then it's going to be, you know. Right. If you make it nice. long enough, it'll puddle really nicely around your neck. That's what I'm kind of hoping. But, the, <laughs> but I'm assuming that that was the mistake I made. Probably. Uh, the other possibility is that um, chain, chains are generally tighter. Oh. Uh huh. Oh, that's good to know. Here, yeah, because you're just like chain, 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 chain. A lot of times chains, you work chain tighter than you would when you're working like a single crochet stitch. So that's actually, I should put it this way, because that's the way it is being built. Mm-hmm. And so reading crochet turns out to be, easy, at least in some ways, turns out to be a little bit easier in some ways than um, reading knitting because of the the way the V's are so clearly V's, like the bottom of the V triangle, that's that's where you started and you're building up, so the top of the V is going to be... The How the stitches the look? Yeah, it's easy to it's easy to figure out which, <laughs> which is your working end. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice. That is true. Yeah. So hats and like this is a super dense cowl that I made for when it's really really cold. Wow. Uh, with some with some super bulky and this is post stitches again to give you that really squishy, um, very structural, um, almost sculptural kind of fabric. Yeah, but that's like a miter box pattern. What did you do? No, it's actually. Um, it's again. It's a dead symbol because this is me, <laughs> and it's all about the potato chip project. Yay! So uh, this particular cowl is just um, it's double cro it's double crochets a series of um, double crochets. So you front how to describe this to you. So. Uh, it would be analogous to a pattern where, like, you're doing knit, 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 purl, 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 and mm -hmm. then on the next row, you offset that one, so you'd go purl, knit, 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 purl, purl, purl. So like you know a basket I mean? weave, but, but... So it's like a stair... Row. You know how you do that stair step thing? Yeah. By just shifting the pattern over one stitch each round? Yep. It's the exact. It's the exact same thing, but it's just with uh, those post stitches, so it's post stitches, front post stitches, and then back post stitches, and then the second round just offsets them by one, so you get that angled. Um, and is it, is it like a three by three? Angled like effect. Four? So you this. get three front, three post, three front, three post? I believe so, yes. And then move it by it one. It might be four. It might be four. It's four. Yeah. That's cool. One, two, three, four. But yeah, so it's really, like I said, it's really a sculptural fabric. Um, and again, this is variegated yarn. Um, crochet combines the colors really nicely with variegated mm -hmm. yarn, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get some pooling, but it doesn't, um, it pools differently than it would pool in knit. And that that is not a, um, that colorway isn't doing anything like any of the other colorways did. You're not getting any kind of stripes or anything. That's really kind of a, a speckled egg. Yeah, this is a Sunshine. real cool. yep, a real variegate. This was um she's not dying anymore. This was an uh Aisha Celia um yarn and sh what base is this? Is it I was gonna say is that cotton? It looks like No, cotton. it isn't. It's Oh, the woman's name at the oh, Great Wool in the breed is not coming into my head right now. That's okay. The question about the way that looks, it, the speckled egg type look that Heather's talking about, is that a function of how the yarn is dyed or a function of the way that stitch pattern makes it look or is it a combination of the two? I think it's a combination of the two. It is a true um, in the in the hank. It was a true variegated yarn, so it's not at all stripey. Um, so that's the kind of yarn that it you know started with, um, and it's a hand. She did all hand painting, so it was a hand paint. Um, uh. And um, but crochet just combines colors differently. I think it's because. You know, you're twisting strands around each other. So where the, um, you know, where the color's the same, you'll get a stitch that's almost. See the how that pink one 
is yep. it's all pink, That's right? Solid. But then right. you get other stitches like this where you're you have, you know, four colors red, and trends. Colors. Yeah, where the colors transitioning and they all almost barber pull together and that yeah. gives you that gives you that um speckled look that you're seeing. I think. And for those listening at home, that is actually a pretty good description of how it looks. Barber pole, sort of. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've been taking screenshots of all of our, our things that were whatever ones I put on the show so that if people go to the show notes or if you're on the app and you tap the little notes icon, you'll be able to see the pictures of, um, of all of this stuff. So people will then, cool. for something, let's see, we already covered kind of all that stuff. And then something totally different that... Um, I grabbed because you said I was learning it when we <laughs> went on the cruise. Yay! Um, I grabbed some of the Tunisian stuff I've done. Yay! <clears throat> um, and this is actually yarn I bought on the cruise. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> because it reminded me of the glaciers. Yes. This is Raven Fog Fibers, and it's um, got blues and whites and kind of grays and dirty browns and dirty blues <laughs> and dirty whites. It really is a glacier. Um, yeah, and it's, um, I don't remember what the mix is, but it definitely has mohair in it. <laughs> yeah, it looks, <laughs> you can tell that. It's got um, that fuzzy halo. Right, but this is, so this is Tunisian crochet, and this is Tunisian simple stitch. Um, Tunisian crochet is worked on a long needle, or a needle that has a long cord on it, and it's, one directional. So you chain a you you have a chart starting chain and then you work down one way and you pull up loops and you leave it on the needle. You leave all these loops on the needle. And then when you get to the end, you pull back loops. So it's like it's almost like you cast on stitches and then you cast them off going the other way and you cast them on and you cast them off and you cast them but on. But all with a hook. So it looks but like a needle hook. lengthwise, but it's yeah. got a hook on the tip. Yeah, and I couldn't find my Tunisian kit, so I couldn't bring it, but hope, maybe I'll find it for next week. Um, but because of that, that's how you get those nifty bars in there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, because you're actually, you're pulling loops back through the bars as you work the stitches off, and then it's like you're picking up the bars on the way back, and then you, and then you work it them off. It reminds me of a, um, what is it, bamboo stitch in knitting. Yeah. But it's really, the thing about Tunisian is Tunisian is a really dense fabric. That's so it's even more it's even more sensitive to gauge than um, other things. Um, and if you're, if people are interested in Tunisian, I think the person that does the best with tutorials is um, Stitch Diva Studios, has some really great tutorials about Tunisian online. Because um, this was, again, a super simple hat. Those, it's a, she has it in the round technique that's kind of tricky, um, but it makes a lovely fabric and it made a really nice, oh wow, dense hat for winter. It also like does it. really interesting things with the color. Yeah, because it creates a really striped look, but then you get those little bars that go in between the rows. So it's yeah. a really, it does a really good job of mixing the colors. Yeah. Um, in a multicolored yarn. I think. That's so interesting because going back to those mitts that you showed, they striped so specifically. It was almost like you had done specific color changes. Well, it was Noro. <laughs> so, yeah. These. Yeah. Yeah. Those. And yep. that's so regulated and and even looking. And then the Tunisian right. crochet looks it's a complete right. it's not a knit fabric. It doesn't look like a crochet fabric. Yeah. It is There's really another one. Oh look at that. Is that Nor that's not Noro, is it? No, this was um, I don't school, I want to say something about Schoolhouse Fibers. Um, it's called Black Cherry was the colorway. And that's Tunisian. Um, this is Tunisian. Yep. Without the mohair. Without the mohair, so you can see the stitch a little bit better. And again, those bars that go in between the rows. Um, you know, and this is Tunisian simple stitch. There are a lot of different, well, I have another one. I don't have a Tunisian knit stitch sample, which is crazy. It looks, I wish I did, because it looks exactly <laughs> like knitting. It's wow. just much denser. Um, well, this is a very, sort of a variation of it. This is a ribbed stitch in Tunisian. Oh, wow. 
in an orange briar rose again. Oh, this one's pretty bulky. That's so pretty. Yeah, but again, if you work it at the right gauge, you know, it's not dense as heck. No, the benefit, it's still <laughs> the benefit being in Minnesota, it makes a nice, dense, squishy fabric that's really warm. Yeah. So, yeah. The more yeah, I see this. of the longer ones, <laughs> everybody needs pom -poms. Pom -poms. I know. The more I yeah. see of these um, done by you, the more I keep thinking, you know, that's more than a knit blanket, especially if you have friends who live in cold climates. Mm -hmm. More than a knit baby blanket, that makes more sense to get the squishy baby bunting, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it really is. warm. That would actually be a really interesting, could you imagine? Like, wow. <laughs> That would make a really squishy baby bunting. <laughs> that would be a really hot baby. That um, would be a really warm baby. <laughs> oh, we have a question. Or no, we have a comment. Uh, no, uh, just a comment um, from the peanut gallery. Uh, Yazi Peng Yu says there's a Tunisian spiral blanket on Ravelry that she really wants to do someday. Um, I've asked her if she knows the pattern name. I can't tell if she's off looking it up or not. Oh, good. I shall I hope so. attempt to find it. Um, yeah. But yeah. it sounds sounds really interesting. Spiral blanket. That's I'll have to look for that one. That was how I learned originally with my grandmother. Is she she had me do the um you know start with like three three things or four four chains. She didn't have me do the um, crochet gazillions of times into one chain stitch. Mm -hmm. Instead, we started spiraling, and so I still have with my dollhouse furniture. All of these round, little—they're not even doilies. They were actually rugs for my, my toy house. horses. Yeah, yeah. and, and my doll's rugs. Yeah, yeah. And that's—and I just did little spirally things. And yeah. of course, it's all acrylic. And but I was sick. Was doll house. <laughs> Who cares? I right. Yeah. I made uh, Rasta caps, spirally uh, crocheted, awful acrylic Rasta caps back in the. Late 70s. Yeah. You're so you can cool. make a great pot holder like that too. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just use um, cotton so it's nice and thick. And you could use wool, but you don't really need wool for pot holder. So. No, and the I think the the cotton is nice, and you can you can feel the protection with the cotton I think better, and you can also feel when it fails faster. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. I also worry about wool with stuff like that because wool is so hydrophilic that I always wonder if, it, because it holds water in it, if it would conduct heat. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always worry about that. Yeah. But. I do, I do too. I, so, didn't, I didn't have the word hydrophilic, though, wrapped around <laughs> in my brain to describe it. I just, <laughs> there you go. So last thing I have to leave you with, um, this is more has hair all over them because they're like my favorite scarves to wear in the winter. Um, they're just big circular, you know, infinity scarves. Mm -hmm. They're both done with the same briar rose fibers. Um, it's called Dream Weaver, so it's a thick and thin wool yarn that's like bound with a uh, cotton thread. Mm. So they're both mm. briar rose fibers, the exact same yarn. One's knit and one's crochet. And can you tell the difference? Mm. Okay, so there's a blue. There's a blue one and then the kind of autumnal russety ones and yep wow. this is actually her black gray kind of charcoal colorway but the sun's making it look a little mm. bit navy a little bluer but i mean you can see they have like the same kind of drape yeah they wear exactly the same wow they're just huge bulky loops <laughs> put them both on. I'll look like an Eskimo. He totally do. <laughs> <laughs> it's attack of the cowl. But they both wear exactly the same way, but one's crochet and one's knitting. Now, did you use the and same millimeter size for both, or did you go up in the crochet? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. This is actually the crochet one, and it's worked with. Okay. This is a really fat hook. <laughs> a really fat wooden hook. Um, but really fun, super fast, super easy. Um, and it's, you know, you can get the same results. Yeah. So when people are always like, I have, I have no patience for that crochet bleh, talk, you know, you just, you need to play around with it more and you need to try new things because you can get the same result. You can get the result you like. 
Well, and that's the nice thing about having someone to talk to and, and ask questions of who does both. Because if yeah. you talk to somebody who just crochets, then you feel like, well, I'm not, I, I can't talk about the, the commonality or where the changes are going to happen because there's no middle ground. Right. But having access to you, who does both very well, it makes a huge difference because like yeah. what you just did, being able to see the, that the, the two are fundamentally different fabrics, but functionally right. they, they drape the same way. And that's right. huge. Right. And especially for people who wind up like I did with the um, neck and shoulder problems who can't mm -hmm. knit, right? this makes an awesome option available to them. Right. Plus, plus the idea of taking taking a yarn that they're comfortable with that might be a, a mid-weight yarn, worsted or, or even bigger, and knowing that it's not going to be Kevlar. Right. That if they go up a couple hook sizes, it's going to be easy crocheting instead right. of struggling. Like, like after 9-11 when I was making those mittens on... It was yep. lion, what was it, Lion Brand bulky, and I was doing it on sixes or seven needles and going, Burr. Yeah. I still have those. They are waterproof. <laughs> I bet they are. <laughs> That's awesome. really funny. You know, and that said, I do not everything. I do a lot of accessories in crochet. I do blankets in crochet. I have done some garments in crochet, um, but I... I use different fabrics for different things, and most garments I prefer in knit, just because they're they're not as bulky and they're not as heavy knit. Right. Um, and I don't want a sweater that's going to be 500 degrees. No. Or 500 pounds. And we have a, or 500 we have a, pounds. A mm -hmm. comment? Did we get the the information on the spiral thing? Yeah. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, oh, there's. Okay, there's one that just. The it must be this one. Okay, spiral. It's called spiral Afghan. Ooh. And I'm pulling up the picture right now. It is done on a J hook, cro Tunisian crochet, and yeah, it's really it's Aran weight yarn, and it's uh, I'll give you I'll give you the um, link for the show notes, Heather. Okay. It's uh, actually can you share this your screen? One is, can you show Can you show the picture, or did you look it up on your iPad? Uh, I'm you. I'm looking at it on a different screen on the yeah. iPad. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I've got I've got all my different devices going here. Um, You're so techy. Once upon a time, a lifetime ago, I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's like camo greens, um, and it's just. That's spiral cool. looks like it would be very potato chippy, you know, like you would just want to keep going and going and see how far. Um. Hey, I have an idiot knitting and uh, potato chip knitting uh, question for you guys. If it's if it's potato chip knitting and potato chip crochet now, what happens to idiot poker? <laughs> is it I don't think poker? potato chip poker is the same thing. Uh uh. Because I don't, I don't see how you could put a potato chip on your. I don't think that works in the same way. <laughs> Different. I'm a troublemaker. So I'm scrolling through my queue on Ravelry because I wanted to find her name um, because oh, yeah. it's either Irish or Scottish and I cannot say it. But if you want to see some of the most amazing Tunisian crochet out there, um, the designer's name is A O I B H E. And then her last name is N I, or last name is N I. She does um, amazing fine gauge with lace yarn, um, Tunisian crochet shawls, and they are. Let's get one of these up. They are astounding. Can you see without the glare? Wow. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And that's like that's a plain one. She, there are some that are very ornate and elaborate. They're beautiful, beautiful work. Wow. Um, yeah, she's amazingly talented. I have like all of her shawls in my queue. I just <laughs> I need the brain power to tackle them someday, and I don't have it right now. I was gonna say, is that does that require like crazy, um, crazy counting? You know, I've, I have never tackled anything with patterning in Tunisian crochet. I've just done um, kind of a repetitive thing with maybe some increasing and decreasing along the edges for shape. 
Um, I've never done anything with like lace patterning in it, and that's mm -hmm. what this does. Um, that's what her stuff does. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just making an assumption <laughs> that it would take a lot of brain power. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm For looking me. at her Ravelry queue right now because I can. I can do the <clears throat> screen, screen share. Yeah. But I can't tell. I can't find the one that you just showed us. Oh, maybe. Oh, uh, I don't remember. Venus? I'll go back. So this one is. Um, this one's called. My Venus. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it cool? Oh, holy cow. I know, right? Here, I got it. I can and do like screen share with everybody. And it's like scallops and shells and stripes and. Um, she's so talented. All right, so um, Yazi Yazi Ping Yu says winter nocturne shawl also is beautiful. Winter nocturne. Um, okay, I will find that in a second. So this is just so people can see. Um, the one that um, that was really catching my eye was called Phoenix by this uh, a Aobi. Um, yeah, I'm probably hacking. <laughs> is she is she um, Irish? I can't tell. Her. I can't tell from her name. I guess I've just I'm assumed probably that hacking it's it, but kind of a game. The, the Phoenix one is red oh. and huge and she, has like petal or scallop edges. Uh, there. Let's see if I can do this. I've got the. This is the the Phoenix like one. That. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've got it. So that's her her Phoenix one. Just yeah, she does beautiful. She does beautiful, beautiful work with. Of course, um, the red one catches lace yarns. And, of course, yeah. it does. It's Bertha, Bertha Flaminess. And what was the what was the other one that we heard was a beautiful one to show? Um, I showed you Winter Venus. Nocturne. Oh, Winter, Winter nocturne. nocturne. Look at that! Wow, that's somebody else's version. Yeah. Okay, Winter Nocturne. Whoops, no, wrong way, wrong way. Go back, go back. So she is she is Irish because Dedanon is um, uh, part of the pantheon of Irish um, mythology fable stuff. All right, so somebody holler if we see. Oh, and she's got a Nazi in here too. Yay! So it's not in that collection, but I'm we'll just search on the internet. You know, through. speaking speaking of, do you um, follow Neil Gaiman? On social media, I do on um, on Twitter. So you realize, right, that they have been casting the American Gods movie? Yes, I did, and I saw who they cast <laughs> as Mr. <laughs> Wednesday. I was gonna check. Uh, I was kind of pissed at the reviewer from Entertainment Weekly, who I think it was Entertainment Weekly, who said what Mr. Wednesday's real name is. <gasps> I was pissed. Spoilers. Yeah, I was really, really angry. And How's somebody supposed to watch? Well, it's Here's oh, the wait, winter nocturne. I'm getting there. Oh, see, I haven't been able to have it pull up. That is pretty. Can you do a screen share with her? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find it. Just been, search under winter nocturne. But that would require me to type. Well. <laughs> Yeah, it's not by the same person. It's by okay. oh, Leah well, that's different. Chak Chakcheva. I'm sorry, my Russian stinks. Um, Yulia, and then the last name starts with T. Just search under Winter Nocturne, um, and it's gorgeous. I, I love like the color. The, oh, yeah, there it is. The the blue. Okay. Yeah, that is that is lovely. Whoa. Oh, I have that one in my queue too. <laughs> of course you do. And this all is, the texture. Yeah, is, all all the texture. Is that mm -hmm. one Tunisian? Yes, it is. Yeah, you can see, see the little the, bars. The bars. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, now we're all going to be able to recognize it. Look <laughs> I know at that. What you're now. <laughs> all the little starriness. Very cute. That's really adorable. Yeah. Nicely done. Wow. Anyway, don't write. The moral of the story is don't write off crochet because of what you think it is. Right. Educate it doesn't have to be yourself. That. It doesn't have to be that. I like it. And learning a different craft is fun. And good for your brain. It grows your brain cells, people. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't. It doesn't have to be um, a big thing either. Like I've been doing the little. 
I gave them all to my my nephew. Um, the little cork knights that you uh, you crochet yeah. the little cover for the little like crusader knights with their yeah. shields and <laughs> it's adorable. And then of course I had to make the boys ninjas because I have the little creepy crochet book and they needed ninjas. Oh oh, and there's yours. Hang on, I've got a snake. <laughs> Yay! Hold it back up again because now I've got oh. Hold it, back up. Hold it back up again. It's or, a ringed monkey. It was. You could get rid of your childhood oh, yes, fear. Yes. <laughs> you so could get rid of your childhood fear of wing of flying monkeys. Turn it around. Of, of early Defarge. <laughs> yes. Turn yeah. it around because this is the thing that I thought was so amazing. <laughs> these wings, Dawn, because I made one. Yeah. These wings, if, if done properly, are some of the most perfect create like fabrically created wings I have ever worked. They <laughs> they that. just come across beautifully. Yeah, they worked really well. Um and I'm very happy with him. I was actually just talking to somebody about him yesterday because they were in my living room and he sits up on the mantle. Yeah. And um she was like, what is that? And I'm like, oh <laughs> let me tell you about this story about how I was traumatized by the Wizard of Oz flying monkeys when I was little. <laughs> But the cool thing is that it's also one of those things where unless you read the books... Yeah, you, you don't know the whole story about the monkeys! Yeah, and you wouldn't necessarily recognize it with the hat. Right. And the, mm. right, and I didn't read the books when I was little. It was just the movie on TV every year that, like, scared sent you. me, like, under my covers crying for you know, a week after we watched the movie. Yeah, because um, the bad guys are bad guys. Book, and there's a lot more about... Behind the monkeys in the book. And it's yep. just like those darn ruby slippers that aren't ruby. <laughs> <clears throat> I know. Technicolor. Yep. We have to make it worth our while. Exactly. Okay, so now the peanut gallery is saying they all want to try null bending. Next. Oh, I know. You know who? I'm super excited about teaching it, and I want to send her a note to see if she'll teach it, because they always come up for um, our wool harvest. It's probably too late for this year, but I want to put it in her ear. Uh, the Milkies out of, have you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, out of Wisconsin. I love them. Um, they teach now bending, and I totally want her to teach it up here so I can take a class. I, she's, she, she and I follow each other. Um, yeah, Andrea is a mate. She's super talented. I would love to take a spinning class from her, too. Yes. Yeah, which online, what, about a month ago now? Maybe less. She has a was trying a new um, online teaching portal, and yeah. she had an advanced spindling class oh. that she was teaching. A spindling class, not for beginners. A spindling class for more advanced students. I'm going to detach myself, and I'm going to go grab the null bending socks that John mm -hmm. gave me, so I can hold them up oh. for everybody because they're cool. okay. Well, while Heather's gone. Oh. No. Well, while Heather is gone, um, speaking of spindling, we did have a request um, in the Ravelry board from Bob Lynn, which is Linda in New South Wales, Australia, um, wanted to ask about spindle spinning and mm. if we do it and if we like it and what's you know what we've been doing lately, like if if any of us have been doing it to bring it next week to show. Um, Let's do that next week because yes, to answer your question, um, I well I learned when Heather and I went on the cruise together she taught me how to spindle spin. Um, and I spindle spun exclusively until this last year when a friend of mine needed a new home for her wheel and I was like, oh, I'll try it out. Oh darn. And, oh yeah, <laughs> I'll try it out. Uh, so then I was teaching myself um, wheel spinning, but my primary method of spinning is with spindles, and I probably have, will be generous to myself and say I have, I only have a dozen <laughs> spindles. We'll go with that. <laughs> but I'll, that can be my show and tell for next week. I'll collect them all. Okay. Yeah, I haven't touched my spindle spinning in ages. and Oh, no. Uh, I, have a, I have a bunch I, of projects on them right now, too. I'm, uh, Getting a wheel spinning intervention tomorrow because I I was doing really well and then I didn't touch it for a few months and I went back and it was as if I had never spun before mm. and I was afraid to get back on the horse uh, so I'm having an intervention tomorrow <laughs> with a friend going down to her house and and 
getting getting a, a spinning intervention. So and hopefully that goes well. But next week, yeah, I can bring I'll bring spindle stuff next week, and we can talk spindle spinning because yeah. I have yeah. definite thoughts about that too. <laughs> It's cool. important. It's important to have definite thoughts about spindle spinning <laughs> and and stupid spindle tricks. Which <laughs> well, you have those. I don't have stupid spindle tricks, but you have quite a few. <laughs> I was, I was, but I was, I didn't do this. I was at um, Soar. I guess it was the second time I went to Soar, and um, I'm totally uh, at Abby. Um, Frank Mutt. Yes, she and God, maybe it was Stephanie Pearl McPhee. I can't remember who Off it was. The balcony. But she, yes, off the balcony, and she was drunk as a skunk, and she yeah. caught the spindle in her mouth, which, you know, dental work, be damned, she could have done right. But that's what yeah. happens when you're a professional. Yeah. All right, so let's see if I can show you some knob bending. Cool. This. I have to do this. Oh, I didn't realize you'd actually done knob bending. I didn't. John did. This is from John. And I want to get this. So one of the things that's interesting about it is that the camera's not focusing. Is that focus? Can anyone see that? Yeah, there you go. So the it's got a definite diagonal, which I thought was interesting. And um, I couldn't see any way that you could have changed colors any more uh, cleanly than, than he did there. Um, but he was able to make socks while knob bending, and part of it was because he he sh he didn't know what it was called. He short rowed right there, so he had his turn. But then if you look at the you can kind of see the heel construction that it's circular. It stops, so it's like he added on the little heel cap towards the end. But for for the toe, see if you can see it. It's like a star, star decreases around, yeah. around the toe leading up to the point. And then he did, I think he said this was not bended. He, he made this and he said, it's not a pumpkin hat. And I said, okay. And he said, it's a tea cozy. Oh, sure enough. So it's a little pumpkin tea cozy. Yeah. It has an opening. It has a slit in each side. So the handle can stick out one side and the spout can stick out the other. Erica has it's a either question. that or else gigantic, uh, gigantic Dumbo ears to stick out. If yeah, one of the two. Um, yeah. I, did, I did mention that too. No, so question um, from Henriette about the sock. What She asked which null bending stitch it was. I don't know if you know enough about That is an excellent know question. What. He showed us knob bending, which I, I think is, um, I think he was doing the most simple single stitch. It would be like doing uh, nothing but single crochets all the way around. Um, and he demonstrated. And actually, is Ms. Thursday Adams in in house today? I can't see the names of the, the people I who are here. I think so. Okay. If so, she's being silent. I will I will talk to her to, to make sure. She and um, Josie Henley sat with him after dinner the last night we were there, and I think he taught them knob bending. But and I'll, of course, I'll take a screenshot of this again because John's John socks are teal and gold, so it's really distinct color changing. But you can you can pretty much tell that there is one one loop that's getting picked up on the next way around. And um, I was going to look and see. Oh, I can. Okay. Because it's two colors, I think I can separate. You can see it. Oh, if I can get the camera to focus there. So you can see it. the structure a little bit better. It looks, it's, it's weird because it looks like it's half of a crochet, crochet stitch and half of a knit stitch. Cause we'll have to try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe we can do a tutorial on one of our Tuesday chats. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how to do it, so I'd have to learn first. And you know, I haven't it translated very well to audio. No. No. That's true. And now I'm sticking the needle through. <laughs> yeah. That would be awkward. No, we'd have to have a camera like pointing down on the hands. and. It would have to be a special thing. That would have to be a very special thing. Yeah. 
Mars. Okay, I have a dog who needs to go outside. So. All right, you take the dog. I have to show everybody fabric, but but go ahead and. Okay, I will be back. He's got to go to the bathroom. I'll stay here. Okay. <laughs> So, I, have, I think I have things to show, so. Okay. It's been so long, I've been quiet for weeks. I, I'm going to share the screen again for a second because this is the page that um, uh, Millie did over on her Wild Olive blog. This is for Vanessa's son. And she's these are the, she's doing Ninja Stars because Vanessa was mixed martial arts and crafts. And she thought that the, that looked like a throwing star, which would be kind of cute. So she's got instructions on how to do the quilting. So if you've never quilted before, this is like the perfect time to attempt something if you're interested. But these are the colors that Millie found on Vanessa's um, baby registry page, which are, I think they're marvelous colors for, yeah, they're great. for anyone. You're right. So I went digging through my stash and I am so stuck because one of the things that Millie says is to use a low volume print. So when I when I went looking through my stash, the only things I could find that had the proper pastelli range was little bumblebees, ah, uh. <laughs> which I think are adorable. I think that's just you know a little busy bee baby is kind of cute. But then <laughs> I love this so much. Those are, those are dead on. Those are dead on the right colors, but Sheep. but that's not a low density, low volume print. So I'm actually going to take a picture of it with a ruler next to it and email her and say, if I made sure that there was a sheep on each of the four corners, I mean, it would probably stand out a little bit, but dang, they're little green and blue sheep. Adorable. Well, and there's a little black and white one there. But I'm gonna have to go uh, to a fabric too. store for the other for the contrasting color because I think two things that have real printy prints is probably gonna be too much. So darn, you have to go by fabric. And then the la I know. And then the last thing is I wanted to celebrate the 20th year of a very creative team. It's the 20th year of the movie Fargo. Oh no way! It is. It's Seriously? It totally is. Yeah. Totally you guys don't live in there? Minnesota. Like, we've, been, we've been celebrating that for a while here. Oh, oh God. <laughs> we, you know, when we moved, when we moved here, and we were looking at the the house and and everything to to de decide if we were going to rent this one or another one down the way, we got all the way back out into the backyard, into back forty, and looked looked to the side and went, Oh, look! There's a wood chipper there. Okay. We we need to be pretty careful with our neighbors. It turned out to be our landlord, so that's he's, hilarious. He's, he's nice, but yeah, it's a chipper. Okay, I just went and looked on Craftsy, and apparently there's a need for a knob bending Craftsy class. Seriously, <laughs> there isn't one unless I'm really spelling it incorrectly, which I don't think I am. It it can be spelled. There are several different ways to spell it. I tried it without an E, and I tried it with an E. Did you do N-A-A-L? Ooh, I didn't. Try N-A-A-L, or the N with the A with the little circle on top, with a little raw. Yeah, I don't think they have one. Maybe someone will let us know we're wrong, because I would go today and <laughs> take a crafty class, because I'm thinking about it. No, but you're or actually. Yeah, we're going on vacation, actually. We're going to Florida in two weeks, so that would be perfect to do in the car. Uh huh. If they had one, but it doesn't look like they do. All right, I'm going to make it my business to find out. <laughs> so everybody who's listening, if you know, Heather at Craftlit.com. Por favor. Cool. All right, Erica, what do you got? Okay, well, as far as finishuary, I was a total fail. <laughs> um, I think I did four rounds on on my orange socks, and um. Whatever my last update was on the uh, Entrelac scarf, it's still at the same point. I was really tempted to just finish that layer and bind it off and call it done, but no, I'm, I, I got to get it to five feet. I think for as wide as it is, it needs to be at least five feet long. Um, it just 
wouldn't wouldn't look right if it weren't. Um, and I haven't touched the blanket in weeks. I'm in I'm in the doghouse um, on that one. Um, but did I I showed some of, I showed a couple of things from stitches last time, but I don't remember what I showed. I showed my Jenny the Potter little whiskey glass thing that in my world is a vase. Yep. Um, did I show any of the yarn? There was something else. I can don't. look. I can look. Oh, can no, look. you know what? It was It was the needle nook. It was the needle nook I showed, not the okay. yarn. Okay, yep. so so some, some cashmere came home with me. <gasps> it's this funny is, how it attaches uh, to you like that. Ooh. Lexadorna knits. Is that a and brown? This is, or is that a this is the s Signature edition sport weight in the colorway is called periwinkle. It's like two shades of brown, kind of marled. I, I like that. See. What does it and want then, to be made into? Well, hang on. And then the other one I got was their soft spun solid in hedgehog. Oh. Which is a lighter brown. And together... They are going to be a slip stitch project that uh, a design that I I'm created a few years ago that needs to be redone because sadly the yarn that I designed it for is no longer dyed and produced. Sadly, cephalopod yarns no more. Oh, so yeah. so doggone it, darn it! I have to re remake this this design, and so I think it wants to be cashmere. Um, that will be the, the the fancy yarn version, and then there will be a a budget yarn version in um, two twenty sport. Um, cool. I like that you do that. Then, that you do the both the the pricey one and the yeah. more modest. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this, I fell in love with this yarn last year. I bought a skein of it. Ended up giving it to a, a friend and regretted it, <laughs> so I bought another skein of it. Um, it's fresh. It's fresh, fresh from what? the cauldron. Oh, fresh from the cauldron. It's, it's super wash um, graduated. It's 400 yards of 100% super wash merino, and it's a true graduated. It's not stripes. That that really bugs me about a lot of supposed graduated or gradient where it's really stripes. This is a true graduated. It starts one color at one end and ends up the other color at the other end. Wow. Um, and the, this particular color, they have great names. This one is called Exsanguinate. And it's, um, for those listening at home, it's shades of red and purple going to black. Yeah. Um, very evil looking. It's kind of like a vampire took a victim and started dripping their blood on the yarn at one end and then just walked, dripping them all the way to the other end yeah. <laughs> over 20 the, yards or so. The other colorway of that that I've worked with is called Reavers, which is from um, Firefly. Firefly. They, ha and they, they also have a whole line of supernatural ones, and they had a line of... Um, Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> so, but this was the Reavers. This is how it knits up. Okay, you're gonna have to hold it for a little while because your your stream is doing weird things. Oh wow, that's pretty. I so like it. So it's gonna be even. I think it'll be even better in the Exsanguinate because it's brighter. Um, and that's um. That's just a one skein, one skein shawl, and the the points kind of drip down your shoulders when you're wearing it, ah. um, and it'll stay on without because of the shape. Is that a new it's pattern? Called, it, it is. It's called Aaron's Star. Um, so yeah, I think I'm I, I'm not usually one for for re knitting a project, but I think I'm probably going to re knit it in the exsanguinate. Because that's the color I imagined it in, in the first place. Um, Is that E R I N or A A R O N? E R I N, as in as in Miss Calendar, Aaron. Got it. Um, and then, 
this is it's going to be hard to see. This is Blarney yarn, and it's called Plush, and the color is Pewter. I don't know if you can see how it's mostly solid with blips of the darker color. It's a light. It's a light gray with with blips of a dark charcoal that's that, cool. that show up. Um, oh yeah, they're, there's yeah, they're like and, horizontal bars. Right. So this will my my kid helped me pick out the color when I was at Stitches, so she's probably going to end up with the finished object. <laughs> right. She's the one who chose the color. Um, so those were my, my yummy goodies that came home with me from Stitches. Uh, and I already talked about the spindle spinning and the fail. And um, Oh, and I sent you that picture yes, last night of uh, the cooking picture. Yes. Uh, so the it. the latest the latest fad in the cooking in this household is is lasagna rolls. But this we didn't have the spinach, so he made sort of deconstructed lasagna rolls. That I have to pull this up. <laughs> yes, and that, it uh, it made me drool. Hang on. I had a had a secret ingredient in there that. Uh, my my non vegetable eating kid didn't realize she got some extra vegetables in there. What? Um, <laughs> he's now horrified in the background, saying, "What?" Um, but there were some some other vegetables cooked and then mashed up and and added in there with the tomato sauce. So, boy, so what? <laughs> she's I don't know if you can hear her, but she's in the yes. background being horrified. Horrified. She's homesick today. Um, that looks and on the and on the the uh, smoked cheese front, so far the verdict is smoked Swiss is the best of the ones that he has has made. Wow! I, I would show a picture, but that's really kind of a boring thing to look at a piece of smoked cheese. Plus, it doesn't usually last long enough to get picture shown of it because we eat it up because it's so good. Because that's so, those are, our, <laughs> yeah. those are those are our our creations. Uh, happening around here lately. I have not, last week or two have been weird, so I haven't been knitting very much. Yeah. But that, yeah. that is what's going on. And then on our food front, we've had a lot of this. Green juice. Oh. <laughs> because we've had strap and other gross things going on. And soup. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Crockpot stock is our cold season savior. Is so. your green, oh, green yes. drinkiness just like kale stuff? Um, we have a juice, a juicer juicer, so it's not just a, like a blender smoothie kind of a thing. Um, this one had ginger, green apple, kale, parsley, broccoli stems, celery, cucumbers. That might have been it. There might have been some spinach in it. That's really, uh, that sounds so much better than what I thought it would sound like. The um, We have what Juicer Juicer too from mm -hmm. forever. Oh my God, it's like 15 years old because my dad got it for us when we had the baby. And I love that thing. I do too. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's <laughs> we do a lot with it actually. And last summer, we had a friend um, in the neighborhood whose next door neighbor had an apple tree, and um, there was nobody living at the house, so we picked a whole apple tree full of apples. Wow! And couldn't we could not eat them fast enough because they were they needed to be used. So Juice. we yeah we froze a bunch, but then we just like threw them all through the juicer. <laughs> How did you freeze the apples? Did you slice them and and For bag pie. them? Yeah. So we. Um, Basically made like apple jam with sugar, and then froze them. That makes sense. Yeah, nice. And sauce. Oh my gosh, did we make and can a bajillion quarts of applesauce? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Delicious. I, I know that. I actually just looked at the time, and I have a child coming home from school. Okay, you gotta go. Oh. Uh, I'm not that he wouldn't want to come and entertain the troops, but. <laughs> it, you know, an hour plus of us is probably enough for anyone. I think. I think we're good. 
<laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody who showed up and, and stuck around with us and, um, and wrote into the chat room. And if you have any links from any of the stuff that you guys talked about in the chat room as well, please send them to me. And we did have our first passerby stop in for a moment, too, this week. Mm -hmm. Somebody who just kind of showed up and said, who are you guys and what are you doing? Um, <laughs> our, you first, our first <laughs> passerby. <laughs> Someone like from that. Russia. Uh, so funny. Cool. That was interesting. I like it. Woohoo! So, a looky-loo. Right. I like it. All okay. right. Well, have a great week, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you next week. I'll bring my spindles next week. Yes, spindly. Craft on and be awesome. Yay. Bye. Bye.